Hi, my name is Katie Everson, and today I'll show you how you can use Adobe Illustrator to enhance and post-process plots that you make using R. For this demonstration, I'm going to use two different types of plots. The first is a scatter plot, shown here, and the second is a simple phylogeny that will look like this. And the first thing that we need to do is export these into a file format that Adobe Illustrator can read. I'm going to use the PDF format. There are a couple ways that you can do this correctly. If you're using RStudio like I am, you can choose to save as a PDF. I'm going to export this scatter plot as a PDF, make it a 4x4 plot, and just name it test our scatter plot. Another way that you can export a plot to a PDF is by using this command. I'm going to call this test our phylogeny.pdf, 8.5 inches and a height of 11. And you also need to use this dev.off command. This tells R to make a blank PDF document, plot that phylogeny into it, and then turn off recording on the PDF document. The next thing we're going to do is open our plots in Adobe Illustrator. Opening the program, you should see a toolbar on the left-hand side of your screen. If you don't see this, you'll need to go to Window and make sure that Tools is checked. The tool that we're going to be using for the most part today is this black arrow tool. And first we're going to open the sample phylogeny that we made. When you open it, you might notice that as you scroll over the different lines, it looks like you should be able to select them, but when you try clicking on them, everything gets selected as one unit. So the first thing that we need to do is go to Object, Clipping Mask, Release. And that's just something hinky that happens when we export from R as a PDF. So this should have solved it so that we can now select each of these different items on the plot individually. You might also notice that here is a completely blank box. We can just delete that. There are a lot of different ways that we can adjust this plot. Perhaps we want to make all the lines on the figure thicker. In order to do that, we first need to select each of the lines. If we hold the shift key, we can see that as we click each of the lines, they're added to the selection. But this would take a while, especially for a larger phylogeny than this, so instead we can use the black arrow tool, click above everything, and drag down to select all the lines at once. And then we can adjust the stroke on them all together. One other way that we can select all of the lines at once is by selecting just one, then go to Select, Select Same, Select Same Appearance, and that will select everything that looks like one of these lines at the same time. And again, we can address the stroke of every one of the lines at the same time. We might also, in some cases, want to adjust some of the lines to make them dashed. For example, if we want to denote fossil taxa, and that's easy by going to the Stroke panel and we can manipulate the sizes of the dashes and gaps very easily using this tool. Again, if you don't see the Stroke tab here, you need to go to Window and make sure that Stroke has a check mark next to it. Now let's say that you want to move all the text to, a, to the right a little bit. Again, there are a few different ways that we can select all of the text here. We can either click down and move it to the right, or we can select one of the text boxes and go to Select, Select Object, Select Text Objects. This would also work if we used that Select Same Appearance tool again. And again, we can move these to the right. We can also adjust the font size or adjust the font style or the font of all of that text as one unit. The last thing that I want to do to this plot is to use colored boxes to emphasize the different subfamilies. 
So we're going to use the box tool or the rectangle tool. And the first thing we can do is make a box around subfamily number one. This tool here allows you to adjust the color of the stroke. Right now it is filled with nothing, so there's no stroke on it at all. And this allows you to adjust the color of the fill. Let's make this one a red box. And as you can see, it's on top of our text, which is not what we want. So we need to move it behind everything. To do this, we go to Object, Object Arrange, Object Sin to Back. We also want to make this a little bit lighter, and I'm going to give it a bit of a gradient effect. I'm going to add this color red as a swatch and name it as red1. Then go to gradient and apply a linear gradient that goes from white to our red1 color on the far right side. Just to make it a little easier to read, I'm also going to adjust the transparency a bit. That looks pretty good. The next subfamily is here. You'll notice that Adobe Illustrator helps you to line up one box with the next. We have a little subfamily, Geogalini, and we're going to make this a different color. Let's color it a dark green. Again, we're going to add that as a swatch, green one, and put a linear gradient on this one as well. The transparency is already applied because we copied and pasted the box from above. It looks like this is actually sitting on top of the GeoGale text, so we're going to do Object, Arrange, Send to Back. Finally, we will do our last subfamily here, which is all of these species. I'll send it to the back right now. And let's fill this one with a blue color. You'll notice there are a few different ways that we can access each of these different tools. None of them are wrong. Add that as a swatch called blue one. and apply the gradient. That doesn't look too bad. Now let's move on to our scatter plot. Again, we go to open. And we open this plot. I'm going to zoom in. Select everything first using Apple A. And object, clipping mask, release. And this will allow us to adjust each of these points on the plot independently. Now let's say that the first thing that we want to do is to make each of the points on this plot larger. We can select one and go to select same appearance to select them all. Now if we were to simply drag this to make it larger, we'll distort the locations of the points. We don't want to do that. So instead, we'll go to object transform, transform each. And as the name suggests, this will allow us to adjust the size of each one of the points, but keep its location in space. So say that I want to make each of these points, I'll put on preview so you can see what's happening, wider and also taller by the same amount. And we can say OK. Now what if we want to color code these points according to the subfamilies that we define in our phylogeny? I don't actually recommend that you do this in Adobe Illustrator. It would be great if you were to assign the different colors to the points ahead of time using R, just to avoid any accidental misspecification of these points. But for demonstration purposes, I'll show how you can select each of these. Let's say that all of these points belong to our blue cluster. 
so long as the fill color is what's on top here and the stroke is on the bottom and it still says that there is no stroke on this, all we need to do is click on that blue color and everything selected will turn blue. We can do the same with the red points and with the green. And I'm also going to make this 60% transparent just because we did that on the phylogeny as well. The last step is to combine the two figures. My favorite and the easiest way to do this is just to copy and paste one figure into the other. I'm going to select everything here, command C to copy, move into the previous plot, and Apple V to paste. By holding shift and using the arrow keys, you can make these plots move faster. And now if I want it in this corner, let's make it a little bit bigger, you can see that I'm going off the edge. To make the size of the paper larger, we use this tool here. It's called the Artboard tool. And this allows us to just adjust the size of the paper. Okay. Now we want to do a few things to make these two different plots more cohesive. First, we can take this path and make it the same stroke weight as the lines that were in the phylogeny. So just select it and make it two points thick. One other thing that we can do is select all text objects and make sure that everything is 14 point text. This might require a little bit of adjusting of the X and Y axes here. It makes everything look a little bit more cohesive. Finally, this might be a good time to add a small legend. Again, we can use the rectangle tool. If you hold shift while you're using the rectangle tool, it constrains the rectangle to a perfect square. We'll go back and use these three different colors. One, copy, paste, two, and copy paste three. We can then use the text tool. Oops. Then use the text tool. That was starting to type text inside the box, which we don't want. We want it next to it. So we'll just adjust it afterwards. We'll use the same font that we used before and label the three subfamilies as Tim Russ and me. Copy paste to make the next one. Geo Gale and E. And the last one. Again, we will make these three the same degree of transparent that we made the previous ones. And by selecting all, we can move that legend wherever it needs to go. So at this point, I think we're very close to a publication quality figure. And hopefully you found this tutorial helpful and you'll be able to use the skills that you just learned to modify your own figures in Adobe Illustrator.